हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू ग्रेड अप लेट्स कंटिन्यू दिस कोर्स ऑन थ्योरी ऑफ मशीन्स एंड वाइब्रेशंस इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैव कंप्लीटेड द टॉपिक ऑफ गियर एंड गियर ट्रेन चेक आउट द लिंक बिलो फॉर फ्री गेट कोर्स दैट हैज मोर देन 200 वीडियोस अलोंग विद दिस वीडियो फॉलोड बाय डाउट सेशंस प्रीवियस पेपर एंड मोर देन 250 क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम ग्रेड अप नाउ वी विल बी सॉल्विंग सम ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम्स that have appeared from this topic in the recently concluded gate exams these days the questions are coming mostly from the gear train section the questions from gear sections have reduced okay so we will see what all questions have appeared let's start from 2015 okay there is a question that appeared in gate 2015 set 2 it says the number of degrees of freedom of the planetary gear train shown in the figure is i have told you this while we were talking about the degree of freedom of this planetary gear train if you remember directly the answer is 2 the answer is 2 but if you do not remember it or if you feel any confusion that your answer might be wrong by doing it directly so you can just follow the procedure and also get the answer by that also we will look into it how see in this case the number of links are equal to how many links there is one fixed link okay this is link number 1 this gear number this gear having 50 teeth is suppose link number 2 this gear having 20 teeth is link number 3 and this arm is link number 4 so there are total four links in this then about the binary joints here we have one binary joint between this arm and link 3 so that is one and here at this point we have a ternary joint ternary joint between the links 1 2 and 4 so one ternary joint is equivalent to two binary joints okay so two binary joints from here and one binary joint from here so we have total three binary joints so j becomes equal to 3 then we have h that is higher pair here we have a higher pair the point or the line contact between the gear 2 and gear 3 so we have one higher pair so applying the kurzweil equation into this 3 into l minus 1 minus 2j minus h we get 3 into 4 minus 1 minus 2 into 3 minus 1. So this is 3 into 3 is 9 minus 6 minus 1. So it's 2. By like this also you can find out. And if you directly remember it, the answer is it has the degree of freedom equal to 2. And what are those two degree of freedom or the two inputs required for that constrained motion? One is the motion of this gear also known as the sun gear in case of a planetary gear train and the second input is the arm okay so the two inputs for the constrained motion and those two inputs define what the degree of freedom which is equal to 2 let's move on to the next question subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss any update from create up question same year 2015 different set set 3 let's read out a gear train is made up of five is per gears as shown in the figure okay gear 2 is a driver okay and gear 6 is a driven member okay so this is the main driver gear this is the main driven gear okay n2 n3 n4 n5 and n6 represent number of teeth on the gears 2 3 4 5 and 6 these are the number of teeth they have been given like this the numerical value is not given just they have been given like this okay so it is asked the gears which acts as idlers we have to find out which gears acts as idlers okay so let me tell you here one thing the idler gear performs the following two functions the first one is that it change the it change the direction it change the direction of rotation it change the direction of rotation 
of the of the output shaft it changed the direction of the output shaft this is one important function or one major function of the idler gear and second one it it can assist to reduce the idler gear it can assist to reduce it can assist to reduce the size the size of the input or output shaft or the input or the output shaft or the gears while while maintaining while maintaining the space the space or the spacing of the shafts of the shafts so these are the two major and important functions of an idler gear and by looking into these two conditions we see that the idler gear in this case will be gear number 5 you can see these two conditions because it is changing the direction of the rotation of the driven gear so this condition is satisfied and it is also reduce the size of the input or output gears while maintaining the spacing of the shafts so this condition is also satisfied so the answer is c only gear 5 x as an idler in this case okay i hope this is clear let's move on forward to the next question 2016 set 1 see you will see that all the questions are related to gear train neither of the questions have appeared in the uh, recent years of the gears okay it is just the applicative part the gear train okay let us see this question in a gear train shown gear 3 is carried on arm 5 okay gear 3 is carried on arm 5 okay gear 3 meshes with gear 2 and gear 4 okay this is also seen the number of teeth on gears 2 3 and 4 are 60 20 and 100 respectively the teeth of all these three gears have been given if gear 2 is fixed and gear 4 rotates with an angular velocity of 100 rpm in the counter clockwise direction the angular speed of the arm 5 in rpm is okay very simple question just you have to follow the procedure the table the tabular form i told you in the previous class that has to be drawn in this and then it is to be found out okay so let us make that table first we define this as an a motion then we write about the arm then we write gear 2 gear 3 and gear 4 then we write the number of teeth corresponding to them 60 20 and 100 we do not need to find any number of gears teeth on any of the gears because it has already been given okay so the motion is first of all we keep the arm as fixed this is a general procedure all the times you have to do this only and gear 2 rotates gear 2 rotates plus x rpm plus means capital let me write it here plus corresponds to clockwise minus corresponds to counter clockwise okay so since the arm is fixed this will be zero this will be plus x 2 and 3 are in mesh externally so this will be minus x into 6 by 2 or 60 by 20 which is equal to minus 3x okay minus 3x then fourth gear 4 and 3 are in mesh internally so this will be again minus 3x into 20 by 100 this will go by 5 so this will become minus 3x by 5 then next we give the motion to the arm okay now the arm becomes free the arm becomes free and its velocity or angular velocity given by y so we will add y to all y plus x y minus 3x and y minus 3x by 5 now it is given that the gear 2 is fixed since 2 is fixed so this value becomes 0 y plus x equal to 0 and gear 4 rotates with an angular velocity of 100 rpm gear 4 rotates you know means y minus x 3x by 5 equal to 
100 but it is in a counter clockwise and we are considering counter clockwise as negative so this will be minus 100 this is equation 1 this is equation 2 okay on solving these two equations we will get on solving these two equations we will get x equal to 62.5 and y equal to minus 62.5 now let us see what is asked it is asked the angular speed of the arm 5 in rpm arm angular velocity is y y is minus 62.5 it is coming minus that means it is counter clockwise so the answer is 62.5 counter clockwise option number c very simple very simple okay next move on 2017 set 1 again the questions of gear train in an epicyclic gear train shown in the figure the outer ring gear is fixed okay while the sun gear rotates counterclockwise at 100 rpm okay let the number of teeth on the sun planet and outer gears to be 50 25 and 100 respectively okay the ratio of magnitudes of please note this word magnitude of angular velocity of the planet gear to the angular velocity of the carrier arm is okay again the same procedure we are given the teeth of every three gears that is the sun gear the planet gear and the outer ring gear so we do not need to find the number of teeth we simply make our table motion arm then the gear that is the sun gear the planet gear and the outer ring gear okay the number of teeth are on sun is 50 planet is 25 and this is 100 okay I'm not going to write that arm fixed and all those uh, again and again just I'm writing that sun rotates sun or you can write it okay arm fixed otherwise you may get confused sun rotates plus x rpm clockwise and same convention is followed plus goes for clockwise minus goes for counterclockwise okay so this will be arm fixed so this is zero this will be plus x this will be this two the sun and planet are in external meshing so it will be minus x into 50 by 25 or minus 2x and these two are in internal meshing so minus 2x into 25 by 100 which is equal to oh, 1 by 4 so this will be minus x by 2 then the next is that the arm is free arm free given the rotation as y so this will be y plus x y plus x y minus 2x and y, mi y minus x by 2 y minus x by 2 now it is given that the sun gear rotates the outer ring gear is fixed the outer ring gear is fixed that means the y minus x by 2 is equal to 0 and the sun gear rotates counterclockwise at 100 rpm the sun gear is this y plus x equal to minus 100 y minus because it is given counterclockwise okay so this is equation 1 this is equation 2 on solving this we will get on solving this we will get y equal to or x equal to minus 200 by 3 and y equal to minus 100 by 3 but in this case what is asked the ratio of magnitudes of angular velocity of the planet gear the angular velocity of the planet gear is y minus 2x so we need to find out y minus 2x first y minus 2x if you will find it out you will get it as 300 by 3 okay 300 by 3 and angular velocity of the carrier arm the carrier arm is y y is equal to minus 100 by 3 so you need to find the ratio so the ratio becomes 300 upon minus 100 which is equal to minus 3 but please remember it is asked the magnitude so this minus need not to be taken the answer will be 3 okay please that's why i told you to focus on this word magnitude if it would have been asked the simply the ratio of angular velocities then the answer would have been minus 3 because it is a numerical answer type question plus 3 and minus 3 is not same one is going to fetch you plus 2 or plus 1 marks another will be will be deducting your 1 by 3 or 2 by 3 marks so that becomes very important to read each and every word in the question what is asked if it is asked only the magnitude then just provide the answer without any sign okay without minus sign the answer is simply 3 
Okay, let's move again. 2017 set two. A gear train shown in the figure consists of gear P, Q, R, and S. Gear Q and R are mounted on the same shaft. That means gear Q and R are compound gears. They will have the same velocity. Let me write it here. N of Q is equal to N of R. All the gears are mounted on the parallel shafts, and the number of teeth on P, Q, R, and S. All the teeth have also been given. Then gear P is rotating at 400 RPM. The speed in RPM of the gear S is okay. For S, it is asked. So uh, just do it. Uh, P and Q are in mesh. So N P by N Q is equal to T Q by T P. This is equation one. Then but please note down here that r gear is not in mesh with any gear p and q are in mesh and q and s are in mesh so n q by n s equal to t s by t p this is equation number 2 multiplying 1 by 2 we get n p by n q into n q by n s equal to t q by t p into t s By T Q by T P into sorry this is not P this is Q okay T S by T Q so this T Q goes from here this goes from here N P has been given to you as four hundred N S is to be found out T S you know it is T S is eighty and T P is given as twenty four so this goes from here five. And N S you will get as twenty four into five, which is equal to one twenty RPM. So your answer becomes one twenty RPM. Okay, the answer is one twenty RPM. Very simple question appeared in Gate two thousand seventeen set two, and this was two marks question. Okay, this was a two marks question. Next question, two thousand eighteen set one. An epicyclic gear train is shown in the figure below. Okay, the number of teeth on the gears A, B, and D, A, B, and D, are twenty, thirty, and twenty respectively. The gear C has eighty teeth on the inner surface and hundred teeth on the outer surface. Means this gear C, which is in uh, the side which is in mesh with B, has eighty teeth, and where it is in mesh with D, it has hundred teeth. If the carrier arm AB is fixed and the sun gear A rotates at 300 RPM in the clockwise direction, then the RPM of D in the clockwise direction is okay. Very simple question. What you have to do? The teeth are already given, so no need to no need to find the teeth. Just simply make the table. Okay. Motion arm gear A gear B gear C. And gear D. Okay, A has got how many teeth? Twenty. B has got thirty. C has got eighty on inside, hundred on outside. So these two we have written like this. And D has twenty teeth. Okay. Again, same thing that the arm becomes fixed. Let me write the sign convention. Plus goes for clockwise, minus goes for counterclockwise. Just remember that. You don't need to write it in your paper, but For your convenience, you should remember it. If you feel that you might get, uh, uh, you make, you might make some mistake during solving, so please write it down somewhere in the uh, while solving the question in the rough sheet. Okay, and the gear A rotates, gear A rotates plus x RPM. Okay, plus means clockwise. So okay, so this arm is fixed, so this is zero. This is plus. A and B are in mesh externally, so this will be minus two by three. Twenty by thirty becomes two by three. Then B and C are in mesh internally, so this will be minus x into two by three into three by eight. Three by eight or thirty by eighty becomes three by eight. So this goes off. This becomes minus x by four. Two by eight x by four. And for this, these two are in mesh externally. The C and D are in mesh externally, so this will be plus x by four into 100 by 20 or 100 by 20 becomes 5 so this becomes 5 by 4 that is 5x by 4 okay then give the motion to the arm then give the just give the motion to the arm that is the arm becomes free 
so this becomes plus y so y plus x y minus 2 by 3 x y minus x by 4 and y plus 5 x by 4 now apply the given conditions the carrier arm a b is fixed that means the y is equal to 0 and the sun gear a rotates 300 rpm in clockwise sun gear is sun gear a that is this gear a y plus x is equal to 300 rpm and it is given as clockwise okay so this becomes clockwise so y is equal to 0 that means x becomes equal to 300 so what it is asking then the rpm of the gear d so this is d that is y plus 5 x by 4 which is equal to y is 0 plus 5 by 4 into 300 so this becomes this goes off by 75 this becomes 375 rpm and this is coming positive so that means that it is in the clockwise direction and also it is asking in the clockwise direction so the answer becomes option c that is 375 rpm okay minus is also given if it would have been asked in the counterclockwise direction then the answer would have been this because it is not rotating in the counterclockwise direction it is rotating in the clockwise direction and our answer is also coming in plus that means in clockwise direction so simply the answer becomes 375 next question asked in gate 2018 set 2 a frictionless gear train okay is shown in the figure the leftmost 12 teeth gear is given a torque of 100 newton meter the output torque from the 60 teeth gear on the right in n m that is newton meter is okay this is asked in newton meters okay let us write this as gear 1 this as gear 2 means this one the gear 2 this is gear 3 and this is gear as 4 okay so first of all simply n2 by n1 is equal to t2 by t1 this is equation number 1 and n4 by n3 is equal to t3 by t4 now multiplying these two equation 1 into 2 n2 by n1 into n4 by n3 is equal to t2 by t1 into t3 by t4 but you can see here that these two and three gears are mounted on the same shaft so they becomes compound gears and their velocity will be same so n2 will be equal to n3 and these two gets cancelled so we are left with n4 by n1 is equal to t2 into t3 upon t1 into t4 t2 the number of teeth on gear 2 is 48 into the number of gears on teeth <coughs> number of wait sorry this is this is done wrong t1 by t2 it should be t1 by t2 I am very sorry t1 by t2 okay so the number of gears on t t1 is 12 t3 is also 12 upon 48 into 60 so this goes by 5 this goes by 4 so this becomes 1 by 20 so we get n4 by n1 is equal to 1 by 20 okay then the one more important word is given here frictionless gear train the frictionless gear train means the power consumption will be equal to zero whatever will be the power consumption in output the same will go to the power out uh, input the power output will be equal to power input okay so power output will be t4 into n4 equal to t1 into n1 okay so t4 we have to find out this n4 is simply n1 by 20 n1 by 20 in equal to t1 is 12 n1 is n1 this n1 goes from here so we get we need to write this about num not the t this is the torque 100 okay so t4 is equal to 100 into 20 which is equal to 2000 newton meter so the answer is 2000 newton meter option d so these are some of the questions that have appeared from this topic of gears and gear train most of the or almost all the questions after 2015 are from the gear trains only so just focus and you have seen that most of the gears uh, the questions are coming from that part of the epicyclic or the planetary gear train in which that table has to be made okay so that's why i was focusing a lot while teaching also about that table 
So just uh, see those questions, try to solve them on your own. If you get any more questions from the books, try to solve it. And please remember or please uh, uh, try to solve as many questions from the books. Try to practice the test series, the quizzes, the mocks. Okay. Uh, in the next class, we will start the new topic of the flywheel. And as I have already told you, just go through that uh, uh, lecture on kinematic analysis and read that about the T theta diagram. Then we will move on to the next lecture on the turning moment diagram. We will continue with that. And then we will move on forward to the flywheel topic. Okay. So if you have any doubts, any queries, you can write to us on the app and on the website. We will see you in the next class.